Hello everyone. We started the 40 day period of Lent on Wednesday with ashes on our foreheads as a sign of sorrow and repentance for our sins. Ashes also remind us of our own mortality and impermanence. That is, everything in our life on earth, including suffering, is temporary and only our life in Christ is permanent and eternal. Friends, Lent has two primary purposes. 1. It is a time for spiritual preparation for Holy Week, which culminates in the celebration of Easter or the Lord's Passover. Just as the Lord Jesus passed or crossed over our sins committed in the past, and from death to eternal life at His resurrection, we are called upon during Lent to pass over from all sinful, selfish, ungodly and worldly ways to a new and holy life on Easter Day. 2. It is a time for renewal of our baptismal commitment through three traditional Christian practices, almsgiving, prayer and fasting. Friends, at baptism, which was our first Easter, we have been washed clean of the stain of original sin. Yet, as the prophet Isaiah laments, all of us have become like the unclean, all of our good deeds are like polluted garments, we have all withered like leaves, blown away by our iniquities, and do not truly believe in the gospel. Friends, not believing in the gospel means not living or following the way of life laid down for us in the gospel of Christ. So, Lent is a period set apart for us to turn away from sins and come back to the Lord and to His gospel. Friends, when we try to do the right thing, or when we seriously start to change our bad behavior and attitude, we can all get distracted. Appropriately today, our church recommends Mark's account of Jesus' temptation in the desert for reading and reflection. Friends, in his gospel, Mark only briefly mentions the temptation. He does not include the details, such as the kinds of temptations, how Jesus overcame them, and so on. Matthew and Luke, however, narrate the temptation in greater detail. Friends, the most striking thing in these two verses is the Greek word ekbalo, which means to drive out or to cast out. Friends, Mark writes, The Spirit, that is, God's Spirit, drove Jesus out into the desert, and he remained in the desert for forty days, tempted by Satan. The other two writers employ the Greek word anatha, which means to lead. They write, the Spirit led Jesus into the desert. Friends, at first glance, these words might not seem to differ significantly, but to drive out is a much stronger and forceful word than to lead. In other words, Matthew and Luke say that Jesus was essentially guided by the Spirit into the desert, but Mark mentions that the Spirit literally drove or caused Jesus out into the desert. That is, Jesus did not go deliberately and of his own accord into the desert. Friends, desert here means an area which was desolate and uninhabited by people. It was the plan of God that Jesus would go into the desert so that he could be tempted by Satan. Friends, one might ask, why should Jesus be tempted by the devil? Was God himself tempted? Did God tempt Jesus? And so on. Friends, the Greek word for temptation is pirazo. In the Bible, the word is used in two senses, positive and negative. When it is used positively, it means to test, try or prove. For instance, God tested Abraham's willingness and his faith in God's promise. In the Garden of Eden, God tested Adam and Eve just to see whether they would obey him. When the same word is used negatively, it means to entice, seduce, solicit 
or provoke to sin, that is, to tempt someone to do evil, to mistrust God and trust in oneself instead. Friends, as far as the temptation of Jesus is concerned, and foremost, God the Father was not tempted, nor was the Holy Spirit. Only Jesus, the Son of God, who came to live like any other human being, except in sin, was tempted. Jesus was indeed tempted as a human being, not as God. Friends, the writer of the letter to the Hebrews in chapter 4 verse 15 states that Jesus is the one who has been tempted in every way just as we are. Secondly, neither God nor the Spirit tempted Jesus. God is never tempted and he never tempts anyone but allowed Satan to tempt Jesus to prove his total submission to the will of God. Friends, Matthew and Luke record in detail how Satan tried to get Jesus into committing sin. Satan tried to trick Jesus just as he had deceived Adam and Eve. He tempted Jesus with the food, power and glory. He wanted Jesus to disobey God and ruin God's plan of salvation. But Jesus did not give in to any of the temptations. He showed that nothing evil could deceive him. He prevailed where Adam failed and drove Satan away. He proved that he was holy and sent by God. Friends, if he could have yielded to Satan's demands, then he would not be a savior and God would not be sovereign. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. Socrates, the father of ancient philosophy, once stated, The unexamined life is not worth living. That is to say, every human being ought to lead an examined life. We need to examine our own hearts daily, especially during Lent. Let us therefore, by all means, use some time to be alone, to search and examine our ways, Examine ourselves to see whether we are in the faith wherein we have sinned and returned to the Lord. 2. Temptations are part of everyone's life. As long as we are in this world, temptations and trials will come our way. God allows testing so that we can rise up. However, let us not blame God for them. He does not tempt or entices to sin. Friends, St. James reminds us that God cannot be tempted nor does he tempt anyone. Our lives are in God's hands to direct and to oversee so that we fulfill his purpose for us. Hence, sometimes he allows trials in our lives, he tests us. But it does not mean God is to blame for the temptation that we experience. Friends, James says that each of us is lured and enticed by our own evil desires. Jesus' temptation came from an external source, Satan, whereas our temptations come right from within our hearts due to our own sinful thoughts. Friends, we are indeed born with a fallen nature that came directly from Adam. However, our temptations are no different from Jesus' temptations. Just as Jesus was tempted, we are all tempted with hunger, pride, plus a lust for power and glory, and to turn away from God even though his temptations were far beyond and much greater than anything that we will ever experience. 3. Let us be aware that the closer we come to God, the more we will be tempted. Friends, Satan does not like our getting close to God and will do anything to derail our attempts to be good and to do good, especially during our wilderness times. Friends, it is when we are down, discouraged, afraid, disappointed, lonely and ill that we are tempted to listen to the voices that lead us away from God. The biggest temptation most of us are faced with in the wilderness is to just give up, 
temptation to stop trying to live good lives, temptation to be impatient, unkind, envious, arrogant, selfish, untruthful, greedy, self-centered, unfaithful and evil. Friends, the only way to keep from giving up when we find ourselves in the wilderness is to persevere. We must rise to meet the challenges head on and persevere in doing what is right, in being faithful to God, in trusting God, in listening to God and in loving others as God loves us. 4. There is a promise of blessing both on earth and in heaven for those who overcome and endure till the end. God is pleased with the people who patiently endure difficulties, trials and temptations and gives them the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love Him. And at the end of trials and temptations, the faithfulness of God will be revealed as He would bless those who overcome like Job, for the Lord is very merciful and shows compassion. Let us therefore, friends, stand strong and courageous against all the enemies, trials and temptations that confront us and look to the gracious reward God has promised. Amen. God bless you.